I'm just so, so、uh, privileged and honored to be here in New Rochelle and to preach this word.、Uh, you know, we、uh, are in a great series called This Is Us. Somebody say, This Is Us. Yes, Generation Church, This Is Us. And、uh, I was just reading the other day、um, where a, a grandson was asking his grandpa after 65 years of marriage, You still call grandma darling, beautiful, honey. What's the secret? He said, I forgot her name five years ago and I'm afraid to ask her. <laughs> Was that good? Come on, thumbs up, thumbs up. Everybody, thumbs up. I'll give that to Bishop. He can, <laughs> he can use that next week. <laughs> we're, we're teaching through our values、uh, as a church. And,、uh, you know, every organization has values, right?、Uh, whether they state them or not, values give direction and purpose for an organization. It guides their actions and decisions. It also helps to define what the organization stands for and what it is to achieve. And so, if、uh, you look on the screen,、uh, you'll probably see here、uh, the six values of Generations Church,、uh, where we talk about passion. Which is loving God, compassion, loving people, community,、uh, generosity, integrity, and excellence. And Bishop Ma did a great job in preaching generosity last week. And if you missed any of our sermons, you can always go back to our YouTube channel or our website and you can watch those sermons there. And today we're going to focus on this value of integrity. Somebody say integrity. integrity. And、uh, one thing about me,、uh, I. Love saving money. How many with me? Saving money. I love saving money. So I will compare prices.、Uh, when I'm shopping online,、uh, you know, I will hunt for a promo code. There is a promo code. I will find it. <laughs> And、uh, maybe, you know, shopping in the supermarket, you know,、uh, I'm using a, a coupon.、Uh, And, you know, when I think, think about, you know, these coupons, there are times where maybe you find a deal and、uh, maybe, you know, you see, On the coupon, some fine print. right? And uh, uh, you probably had a coupon that gave you a dollar off some coffee、uh, from the supermarket. And you get in the checkout line, and the cashier rings you up, and some of you, you know, following me and say, Wow, that was just me yesterday. And、uh, here I am at the cash out, and,、uh, and I'm expecting to get a dollar off this coffee. All right? But it doesn't go through. And you know you bought coffee. But the cashier、uh, shows you the fine print on the coupon which says $1 off any coffee except Starbucks coffee. <laughs> the fine print is something most of us don't read, but all of us are impacted by. The fine print adds or subtracts from the original message. If you look on this slide,、uh, how many of you have Verizon? All right, I have Verizon.、Uh, and、uh, you know, there's, there's an ad of、uh, Verizon. You know, and you look at this ad and you may say, wow, what a deal. I can have unlimited everything on four phones for just $45 a phone? Then you read the fine print. Oh, it's $45 a month. Wait, I have to pay taxes and fees? You mean this rate is only if I'm on auto pay? So $45 a month is really like $70 a month. And the fine print made three additional charges on the original advertised message. You see, this is our world today. Our world is filled with the fine print loopholes to keep us from being true. To what we said. And this is not just companies that operate like this, but people operate like this. They may say one thing, right? If I'm honest with myself,、um, and if I'm honest,、uh, and with, you know, if we're honest as our, ourselves, this is something all of us struggle in some shape or form. We live a life with fine print. And there are things we say that we don't mean. There are things that we say vaguely in order to save ourselves. There are things that we do that contradict the life 
that we portray to others. You see, living with fine print hurts our integrity. It breaks trust. It puts our most cherished relationships like our spouse and our children and our family and our friends and even our spiritual brothers and sisters in church in jeopardy. How many ever heard, oh, those folks in church, they're all hypocrites, right? So how do we live without the fine print? I'm glad you asked, because that is what we're going to learn together from God's word in this message I call Integrity, Living Without the Fine Print. Say it with me. Living without the fine print. Let's pray. God, I thank you that it is your word that will never fail. You said heaven and earth will pass away, but it's your word that will endure forever. So it is not my word, but your word that will transform lives here. You would renew the minds and you will change the hearts of your people. I pray a great repentance in this place. I pray lives will be changed. People will be transformed. That every person will leave this place better than they came in. I pray this word will never return void because it is your word. But it will do exactly what you want it to do in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Well, our main text comes from Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. And uh, if you have your Bible, you could turn it. You could have your Bible app or you want to just uh, watch the screen. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. And a little context of what's going on in Matthew chapter 5. We actually call it uh, traditionally the Sermon on the Mount. And scholars believe this uh, took place on a hill overlooking the Sea of Galilee. Today, this hill exists in Israel and is called the Mount of Beatitudes. And if you read Matthew chapter 5, uh, Jesus is teaching many things about love. And, you know, he's talking about how to love enemies. And he's also talking about, you know, um, how to live and how to, to have the, the, the best attitude, the, the godly attitude. And in Matthew chapter 5, verse 33, uh, he continues in this vein uh, in his sermon uh, where he he takes what they have heard, uh, what they traditionally have practiced, and now he's giving a little twist. He is sharing his heart. He's sharing what God would think and say about what they may think they already know. And so here in 5 verse 33, We say, again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city Of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All of you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. How do we live a life of integrity without the fine print? The first point is voice. Somebody say voice. Voice. You must examine the voice that you're listening to. You must examine the voice that you're listening to. You see, Jesus begins where you have heard that it has been said. You see, he's talking to an audience, all right, uh, that is used to oral tradition, right? Uh, it was not anything that was written. It was actually things that uh, they're gen- from generation to generation, they, were, they would speak the law. They would give them and orally just pass on 
what was given to them from Moses on. And then uh, he says, uh, you know, and, and he's talking to, to the crowd, but there are people there who are elites, right? Those who are educated. And those are the only ones who can really read and write, but most couldn't. And so he's, uh, they relied on oral teaching and oral traditions. Uh, and the scribes and the teachers and religious leaders like the Pharisees and the Sadducees were teaching and handing down uh, what they were doing themselves to those that were uh, there. You know, they were talking about uh, the oaths and keeping oaths. And, and, and so they were living that way. And, and uh, that's what they were teaching. And they were passing them on. And so everybody he's talking to knew about oaths because it was passed on to them. Oats were the fine print. You see, oats could vary in sincerity levels based on what you swore to. So, uh, you know, today, you know, when you talk to somebody and they are giving you a promise, right? And they, they you know, one of, one of the things I would say, I swear to God, right? Or maybe I swear on Mary, the mother of God. And I love this one. I swear on my mother's grave, right? And, and, the, and, the, and, and this is, uh, kind of like the levels of their sincerity, the levels of their oath. And, the, and, the, and we see that the Pharisees and Sadducees were the, the ones that Jesus always came after. Why? Because even though they knew what the law said, they would not practice it. And, and so they were the ones that was lacking integrity. They were duplicitous. The, the, the messages they have heard, the messages that, that were handed down to them, uh, they felt like they were exempt from it. But when we think about you know, oral tradition and the things that have been passed on in that day, even in, in our lives, there are things, there are messages that have been handed down to us. There are things that have been handed down to us that are good, but not everything that has been handed down to us is good. See, some of the cultural and traditional norms that were handed down to you from your parents and grandparents and family members and friends that you are practicing it are compromising your integrity. And you may not even know because you've listened to that voice for so long. I remember years ago I was counseling a young man uh, who had gotten a young lady pregnant. And as I was uh, just talking to him and just looking at his past, this was a pattern. And I asked him uh, why he thought he was repeating this pattern. And he told me that growing up, the message that was handed down to him is in order to be a man and to prove yourself to be a man, you had to sleep with as many women as possible. See, this is the voice he listened to. And we can listen to voices at our job. That's, you know, things that you see that are shady, right? But nobody talks about it, right? People clock out for others or lie on their timesheets or adjust numbers on their reports. And you don't question it, but you do the same thing now because it's the culture you picked up and that was handed to you. And now you practice it. And now you live as if it's normal. It's normal now to you. And some voices we listen to uh, that are not audible, but are messages we picked up from observation. See, there are more messages that are caught than taught. And there are environments, all right, that we are in, some toxic environments that we picked up these toxic traits, these toxic toxic cultural things, the toxic things that now we practice and we think it's normal, all right? But the Bible says that do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. You cannot say that you have good character and that you're working on being better in your character if you are in a bad company. If you're in a bad company all the time, if if all your friends have bad Uh, morals and bad character, you're going to end up having bad character and bad morals. So you must spend time with people and environments uh, uh, without the fine print uh, that can influence your character. And and so here, uh, Jesus says, listen, you have heard, but here is what I say. Right? He says, again, you have heard that it was said, but I tell you. 
And we must examine the voice that we're listening to. Are we listening to the, the things that have been handed down to us? Are we listening to the culture at large? Are we listening to everything that's going on at our job? And listening and taking in that and, and, and living that out? Or are we saying, listen, that is not the voice I should be listening to. I need to listen to the voice of Jesus. And you need to examine what is that voice that you're listening to. And you can, you'll know by what you're practicing, what you're allowing, how you're living. And if you're living with fine print, then maybe you're listening to the wrong voice. Some people said amen. <laughs> Here's the second point. Somebody say variation. variation. Make no allowance for variations. See, variation is about change or difference, right? And so he says, uh, Jesus says, do not swear an oath at all. He gives no variation here. He's, he's cut and dry. He says, listen, do not. He says, oaths can be changed because the oath we make it on can change. So look at all the oaths he talks about, all the oaths that... People were uh, banking on and, 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 and taking on for, for themselves. He said, I swear by heaven, right? Either by heaven or, you know, because it's in or God's throne. I swear by earth or by earth and its footstool, right? And, or Jerusalem. I swear by Jerusalem, right? And so they were swearing by all these things. I swear by my head, right? And here's the thing Jesus was saying. Do not swear at all. No oaths at all. Because if you need to swear, then what you're saying indirectly is, my word is not good enough. That my word can't stand on its own. I need to swear by something else. And in that culture, when they swore by something else, they created a loophole Saying, oh, I didn't swear by God, I swore by Jerusalem, I swore by these lesser things, and so that gives me an out to what I promised. You know, there was a time when people closed million dollar deals just by the shaking of hands. Can you imagine that? Oh, thank you for the deal. Let's just shake hands on it. And in that time, your word was your bond. But today, you got to hire a lawyer. You got to sit down, review the stacks of legal papers, sign them, notarize them, get a copy of your driver's license, give them copies of your pay stub, copies of your bank statements 10 years back there, and then when you get a chance, give me a sample of your blood. <laughs> right? Nobody trusts anybody today. <laughs> right? Your word is not your bond today. But Jesus is saying... Do not swear at all. Meaning, don't make any variations. Make no allowance for variations. And here is why. When the oath is broken, when you go back on your word, you can justify it by the fine print. I said, when I get the money, I'll pay you back. I didn't get the money yet. You said you were going to come uh, visit me. I said, when I have time, more time, I'll come visit you. I don't have more time. And the more we live and lean on variations, the more we live and lean on loopholes, excuses, oaths we make, and the weaker our integrity becomes. And compromise in one area of your life leads to compromise in other areas of your life. The, te the cheating on tests at school or the cheating on certifications at your job bleeds into cheating on your taxes, leads in, bleeds into cheating in your marriage, and those small compromises add up and it catches up to us 
And before we know it, we are losing the most valuable things in our lives. And so the Song of Solomon, Solomon says in chapter 2, verse 15, catch for us the little foxes. The little foxes that ruin the vineyards are vineyards that are in bloom. And what this meant was that the foxes were so small, they couldn't get the grapes. So what they would do is gnaw at the roots of the vineyard, tap it so that the grapes can fall, all right, and they can have grapes. But the more they did that, what happens was they started to gnaw at the, the, the vine and they started to uh, take away the years it took for that vine to grow. And the little compromises, the little things that start to affect our integrity, all the things that you built over the years, it took you 10 years to get this position. It took you 15 years to get this spouse. It took you all this time to build all this. And here you are allowing the little things knowing, and here you are falling from the top. And here you are saying, how did I lose my job? How did I lose my house? How did I lose my spouse? How did I lose my children? Because you allowed variations. John Wooden, the great basketball coach, said, talent will get you to the top, but it takes character to keep you there. And I read this Lately, don't let your gift take you where your character can't keep you. Don't let your gift take you where your character can't keep you. And many people fall from the top because their priority was getting to the top instead of their character that would keep them at the top. Don't make allowances for variations. Here's the last one. Somebody say victor. Choose to be the victor, not the victim. Look at verse 37. Jesus says, okay, now that I showed you and told you, listen, listen to the voice. Make sure you examine the voice, all right? Uh, Don't think about the culture's voice. Listen to my voice. Don't make any uh, uh, variations, right? No oats. Don't make any variations. And here's the last one. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Some of you are saying, yeah, there are times that I'm a yes person. I have a hard time saying no. How many of you, right? I'm saying, right? Like a hard time. I have a hard time saying no to people. But all the people knew In that culture, they all knew how to swear by oaths. They knew how to live with fine print. But Jesus presents another choice, a better one. One that was simpler. A life living, lived without the fine print. So he's saying simply, say yes or say no. And so what he was highlighting is integrity. He was highlighting that your word should be your bond. Your yes should be your yes. And your no should be your no. There shouldn't be strings attached. There shouldn't be a string that you you continue. Wait, wait, where? What is this attached to? (laughs) Right? A lot of times we attach our yeses to something. And how many of us have been manipulated Because we said yes to something, but then there was a string attached. Oh, the string. (laughs) And he's saying anything outside of this is from the evil one. And he's, he's, he's pointing to the evil one, which is Satan. And this root word comes from the Greek word ponos, and it means labor or toil or suffering. And pain. And the evil one is Satan himself. He's the one that comes to steal 
to kill and to destroy. And so Jesus is giving a contrast. He's saying the simple life, the life of integrity is the yes and the no. But the life that's painful, the life that's going to be you trying to, you know, uh, be careful who you offend, be careful about your yes and no, right? And, 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 and trying to take the shortcut. That is the painful, that is the evil one. And saying yes or no may be simple, but sometimes it's not easy. Because you are going to offend people. And it may take you longer to get to your dreams and goals. And sometimes you look at the other option. It looks easier. It looks like a shortcut. And I remember coming down on 3rd Street in Mount Vernon. And I was like, wow, I'm going to take the shortcut to New Rochelle. And here I am, detour. Right where Fulton, they had a detour, Fulton and, and Third, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta go down the hill, I gotta go around Columbus, right? And go, oh, it added more time because I thought I was taking a shortcut. And many of us think that we are taking shortcuts when it's actually taking longer because you thought taking a shortcut would get you there faster. And that starts to complicate your life. Anything with a loophole is complicated. Anything with variations, anything with oaths that we make, anything that we swear upon, uh, and and we're living with this fine print, comes with complications, comes with stress. Because you always have to add or remove to the original message. You have to make adjustments. You have to delete texts and emails. Come on. You have to separate your account. You have to change your password. You have to delete your browsing history. You have to remember what you told this person when you're talking to this person. Because the story has to line up. And then you forget what you told to that person and then they're already complicated. You're complicated because you didn't say yes when you meant yes and no when you meant no. There was a loophole. There was something that you attached it to. So now you find yourself in a hole, in a bind. Putting yourself and your integrity at risk. And that's what Jesus says. This is the evil one. The evil one brings stress. The evil one is the is the villain. And when you start to listen to the evil one, when you start to make compromises, it's, you become this victim of the villain. The evil one, Satan, he's the one that wants to steal your peace. You can never have peace. You're always looking behind your back. You're always checking the mail. He wants to kill your purpose. And he wants to destroy your family. That is the evil one's desire. And all Satan has to do is deceive you. Making you believe that you'll win by taking the shortcut. By making a compromise. By not valuing your integrity. By never never telling you the repercussions of your actions that you now start to become a victim as a result and not the victor as God wants you to be. You see, integrity was very difficult in my life. And I remember one of the areas in my life that I struggled with for years was my driving habits. Some of you say, oh, pastor, you're hitting me right here. You're hitting me right here because the cop pulled me over this morning. (laughs) And I remember, you know, I was a speed racer. And I remember I I used to race cars in Hunts Point in the Bronx. (laughs) Hunts Point? (laughs) And I would get speeding tickets and... And I remember, you know, getting my car impounded. I remember getting my license suspended and getting my license revoked. 
And I, and I still would drive with a suspended license. And, and the devil was so cunning because, you know, he would always give me the shortcut. Right? And it was so appealing. I was always trying to find a way to beat the system. I'm going to get over them. I need to drive in my mind. I can't wait, right? And so I find a place that sells Canadian licensed. <laughs> oh, my name is Joe, all right? Joe Smith from Toronto, Canada. And I was driving with a Canadian license. God was dealing with my integrity. And I remember it was a moment I was coming down the West Side Highway. And I, would think, I think we were just married like the first year of our marriage. Coming down the West Side Highway, I was going to work. And a cop pulled me over. And I, oh, when I saw the lights, I was like, oh, I'm dead. I'm done. Because I knew my license was suspended. Uh, I'm done. Comes over, license registration. So, yeah, I have a license. Here's, and, and they found out. They arrested me. And I spent a night in the Manhattan jail. In a cell. On my knees, <laughs> praying to God, forgive me. I am so sorry. I won't do this again. And my dad was a pastor, and my dad was a correction officer. What? But God had to deal. With integrity. The small foxes caught up with me. And I fell. And ever since that time, here's, God has a sense of humor. Ever since that time, I never had like a regular car. It was always a minivan. <laughs> so I... If you know what I'm driving now, I'm driving a Honda Odyssey minivan. What was I driving five years ago? A Chrysler minivan. What was I driving before that? A, a Chevy Venture minivan. <laughs> and he was getting to me. He said, listen, never again a sports car. Never again you're going to be speeding. And ever since then, I've never gotten a speeding ticket. Thank God. Jesus. <laughs> I got pulled over, but never for speaking to you. <laughs> but I found myself when I was compromising and I fell in the, tra the trap of just temptation and to live in a life of, with the fine print. I started to compromise. It was like easier to compromise in all other areas of my life. And so then I was one way in the church and another way in the world. I was the hypocrite. And I could justify my actions. I would rationalize it in my head. And you can fool a lot of people. But the one person you'll never fool is yourself. And every day I had to look myself in the mirror and I hated what I saw because to everybody else I looked like somebody but to myself I knew who I really was and I had to live with guilt and shame for a long time and I had to surrender those areas it was painful. It was stressful. It was a life of being a victim. 
And many of you hearing me right now can relate to me. You identify with this fine print life. If your boss ever knew about the time and the resources that you are stealing, you'd probably be fired right now. If your spouse knew the things you were doing and saying with this other man or this other woman and the flirting that you do, you probably would lose your marriage now and your family. If the IRS ever caught up to you, you would probably be in jail right now. And it's not a matter of if, it's when. It will catch up to you. There's, there's only so much you can hide. But you don't have to live this victim life anymore. You don't have to live a compromised life anymore. You don't have to live a life of loopholes, constantly trying to cover your tracks. So stressful. Why live life that stressful? Because it starts to bleed in other areas of your life. And you start compromising. Start compromising. And I only stand before you today only by the grace and the mercy of God. See, Paul struggled with integrity. He said, I want to do good, but I find myself doing it wrong. And this struggle he saw in his life, wanting to please God, wanting to live a life of integrity, and he sees how futile it was for him to try to fix himself. He says, oh, what a wretched man that I am. Romans chapter 7. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, the one who saved me, forgave me, gave me the power to go from victim to victor. Not my power, but as we were singing today, it's the power of Jesus. You know, one thing that attracted me to Bishop was his integrity. It was not his preaching, it was not his pastoring, which is great. One of the things that attracted me to Bishop Maud and Pastor Sherry was their integrity. And I remember there was a time when he was out of the country. And he had, uh, he had an appointment. He had something that he had to come back to. And it was very easy to cancel it. It was very easy. But he said, I gave my word. So he had to pay extra fees to change his flight. He had to cut his vacation short. And he had to rush here. Why? Because of integrity. He valued his word so much that he was willing to pay money, change his plans. Why? Because you can never buy integrity. but you build on it.